we're sort of sandboxing everything that we're creating educationally. And eventually what that will hopefully turn into in a year, year and a half's time is something that is effectively a textbook or a curriculum. Um, it doesn't exist yet. Um, so the assembly guide, we have step-by-step -step detailed instructions, mechanical and electronic and firmware, basically from start to finish, really good at walking through the students through the hands-on assembly of it. Um, from there, we, we spent a lot of time, this is the first tutorial we put up after that, was making sure that if you're going to fly these, you're going to fly them safely and in accordance with the law. Um, and so we spent a lot of time just doing up some really good illustrations that very clearly indicate you know, how where it's okay to fly outdoors, where it's not if you're a recreational user. Um, we included things like pre-flight checklists, how to you know, have everything on hand in case there is an emergency or safety stuff. Um, and then considerations for flying indoors as well, because a lot of our customers are schools, and schools aren't, they don't, they don't fall under the purview of recreational use, and so now you're looking at indoor flying. Um, we then talk about calibrating, but we also frame it in terms of understanding the physics behind why you calibrate certain within it. So understanding what um, PID systems are and um, control systems and how, and how responsive they are. Um, so calibrating the accelerometer, front balancing, throttle system settings, roll and pitch, and then understanding what, when you make a change on this slider, what that actually does in flight. Um, and then talking about the physics of multi-error flight. We've got a pretty extensive tutorial to help students understand you know, why does it move the way that it does? How does it roll, pitch, yaw, um, throttle up. And then talking about um, forces as vectors and understanding um, that if you start pitching to the side, your upward force is now decreased because you're directing it somewhere else. And the, the flight controller actually compensates for that. Here's how it does that. Um, and then we've got some tutorials on flying. Starting to one I've never flown these before, so here's how the individual controls work. And then getting into, here's some actual drills to follow. So if you want to become a good pilot, um, by the way, I'm not. Um, if you want to become a good pilot, here's a set of really good drills that we've talked to some RC clubs about. If, um, if you walk your, if you work yourself through those, or if you're a teacher and you set your students with a class, these are just good practice exercises that if you follow in sequence, you'll, you'll come out of the other end of that as a good pilot. Um, so just some standardized practice routines. Um, and then we've got some, this is kind of taking it all the way to the do-it-yourself land, how to, how to build running lights. So running lights are probably the easiest thing to add to the firmware. Um, we use um, what are called NeoPixels. It's a specific programmable LED. And here's a case where we can show you how to order a circuit board, how to do, how to solder and completely assemble it, how to wire it to the flight controller, how to add the code to the flight controller. And you can do everything from you know, red-green running lights to make it look like police lights, although that. Um, but you can really have a lot of fun with the code. So this is just a, per a perfect introduction to a lot of the hands-on maker skills and then programming. Um, then we've got the option to add um, a couple of different easy to acquire gimbals that attach to GoPro. So again, we're using how to integrate off-the-shelf hardware onto the platform. And then, so here's an example. You've seen gimbals, how they work, but just students are always fascinated by that. Um, and then programming it for GPIO and servos, how to add servos, how to modify the, the input-output pins, how to add code, and actually, you know, going back to this blinking an LED. But once you blink an LED, now you can attach it to, like you can hack your camera, you can attach it to the trigger. You can now take pictures by flipping a switch on your RC controller using one of your aux channels. And so we walk students through how to do that. Um, and then it helps them understand the code as well. We're, um, we're just finishing up our integration for um, altitude sensing. So precision altitude hold, like um, we, we resell like where laser range finders, which are really fantastic products. Um, but then we have also, if you're for indoor flight and if you're just looking at within a 10 foot envelope, we have a, a, is a 30 or $40 dollar ultrasonic sensor that you can attach that you just enable it in code. And you can put it in a fixed altitude hold mode. So you're really just right stick of line in an indoor, indoor environment. But we also show students how that code works and, and make sure they can understand it. Um, educational customers have picked it up just within six months. Here's, here's the roll sheet so far, and this is an all-inclusive. Um, and we're, we're working, we're not just selling to these customers, we're opening lines of communication with them as well and asking them about what their needs are. And really 
fine-tuning our own curriculum development in response to their needs. Um, so we have we have really good partnerships already with NYU. We go out and talk to them, and then they're they're actually contributing parts back to our curriculum. Um, Northland College, through a uh, National Science Foundation grant, is funding a lot of their work in getting educators at, um, trained up in the Midwest. So the educator course that we're doing here in Rockland, they're replicating in Minnesota. Um, and so we're working with these to try to, to, to make sure that people that are getting into this and doing this are doing it well, doing it correctly, doing it safely and legally. Um, so now that we've started working with schools in six months, what have we learned so far? Uh, a lot. Bro. Um, so um, safety guidelines aren't always followed. So um, we actually now include NEP with our, with our class back. Um, it, it's, it's a reality of it. Um, these things are, these things are, you know, flying close on us. Um, educators definitely need training. It's, it's not just a sales relationship. It's really a, a much more of a two-way collaboration with educators and, and institutions that are adopting drone programs. Um, um, so we're working on compeller guards, obviously, because, you know, you saw that. Um, and then, unfortunately, this is quite catching it, but um, you know this idea that education was not the same as recreational use, and so they're, they're public entities. It really does, in most cases, restrict us to indoor flight, and so making things that work in indoor environments, like using ultrasonic rangefinders to, to do fixed altitude flight, um, and, and you know whatever it takes to accommodate that. Um, students want to work with drones. It's, everybody sees them, they're cool, they're neat toys, but actually making these things safe and functional. Um, so we work on prerequisites, assessments, ability and maturity, so making sure that we're not just providing tutorials, but we're also working towards developing assessment materials to, to give teachers the tools to assess whether their students can actually handle this or they're ready, and give students feedback about their own learning. Um, schools want to create, but oftentimes they have to do it on a budget, so the same concepts that come with you know, the $650 LiDAR can be taught with a $40 ultrasonic rangefinder. And so we can still teach the same concepts and, and functionally similar code. Um, and students are going to build an entire skill set around something on a much less expensive platform. And then those skills just transition really easily into the real world, real market um, skills that you guys, you know, you might want to hire somebody that's hopefully learned up on our platform. Um, and then the funding for schools is there. It exists. Like I said, North Lines Community College received a $2 million NSF grant. Um, and so, there's, there's so much potential that you're all aware of, and we're trying to make sure that we're providing a good base platform, maybe not the most aerodynamically capable or high processing sort of thing, but we just want a good, solid, foundational base that students are able to learn from and learn easily, and that teachers are easily able to accomplish and work with. Um, nobody has a free curriculum yet, despite what may be claimed. Um, can search for it. We've talked to a lot of people. We've talked to departments of education in Idaho, Hawaii, Virginia, Florida. Um, it doesn't exist, but everybody wants it. And it's, it really is sort of a race to completion. But unfortunately, in that race to completion, there's a lot of garbage out there. Um, a lot of the curriculums that claim to be complete curriculums right now look something like go buy a drone, then go design another drone, and they, they slap a bunch of stuff together in a really hot hodgepodge. Sales pitch. So, all right. Um, they need more information. They want to know about the jobs that are out there, and that's it. 